All right, hello everyone. I'm excited to be here with David from Tivity Health, uh, an amazing Plumi customer. And we've had a great journey for over almost you know two years together. Um, and uh, yeah, he's here to talk a little bit about you know what, how Plumi has helped his business, how he sees the current kind of cloud native landscape, and some of the challenges that they've faced and how they've tackled them. Uh, maybe to get started, David, we'd love to hear a little bit about you and your own words. You know what. What's been up at Tivity Health and how did Palumi enter the picture? So um, roughly three years ago, we created a plan, um, both technical and financial, to go from data center to the cloud. And in the cloud was cloud native. So, you know, we kind of skipped the lift and shift and then go cloud native. So we went directly in. In doing that, part of the engineering was figuring out, okay, we're going to go DevSecOps, right? We're going to automate. We made another choice around GitOps as well for the developers. So developers stay in their repos, they code, and then everything else inside DevSecOps, we're going to automate. So they do the code, we'll deploy code, we'll deploy infrastructure. So from a, from the SEC and the DevSecOps, right? Almost, you know, the we manage heavily who has access to any infrastructure, which is almost no one. So if no one has access, only the machines have access, then your, you know, your, your profile, your security risk goes way down. So we made that decision early. Uh, part of the critical tools, because um, from a, you know, an operations perspective, we live by if you can't automate it, we don't need it, right? And automation is really around two things. One, it is quality, right? So if you're automating and you, you make a mistake, you can go to last known good, right? You can find problems. You can fix them quickly at scale. The other thing is really about turning the business around and facing forward. So having the having the product engineers working on product with the business and not caring about the infrastructure is where we wanted to get to. And so really being crisp around the automation to allow people to turn around and face forward. Um, like, no offense, you know, you know, in DevOps and deploying infrastructure, like it's like putting a roof on your house. Like you need it, you have to have it, but there's no cosmic joy, right? So, you know, the automation in the in that perspective is a great investment, right? So it's the other piece of it is time. So the time that we're not asking development engineers or product engineers to put into infrastructure and building and pushing code means they can spend more time doing product and, and that's your competitive advantage Right when you you know when you have the size of audience that we do in silver sneakers. Awesome, it's great to hear about sort of the business impact and the fact that it's allowed you to kind of accelerate you know moving from data center to the cloud. I say we we often hear at Pulumi we hear from practitioners who just love using Pulumi. You know, being able to use general purpose languages helps them do things they could never do before. They feel like they're so much more productive, they can get so much more done. And I'm curious from your perspective, being a leader, you know, a VP of a large um, critical part of the business, how, how would you describe Pulumi as uniquely enabling you to solve these problems, um, maybe to your peers? So, I mean, I tend to, I tend to have these one-liner isms, right? And it's, if, if I can't automate it, I don't need it. And and I know it sounds kind of flip, but it paints the right picture and everybody understands it. And, you know, we've got the kind of plumy graph in the automation, which is just a march to the upper right. Right. And everybody sees how easy, you know, you can, you know, you kind of have that job you can't explain to a lot of people. Like, what do you do? I do computer stuff. Right. Uh, or you're the family help desk. So, um, but people, you can show them the automation, like the, you know, you know, Plumi, you've got the kind of the usage view, but people start to see it and then they start to feel it. And when they feel it, that's the most important thing, right? Because it's like trusting the system. Oh, we can do that. Oh, that's all it took. And, and that's when, that's when we know we we've won, right? And I don't mean one, like in a competitive way, but we've gotten the mind share because the mind share is, oh, it's just easy for us to do that now in it. And that's one of the most interesting things is watching the expectation of time change. Like it like used to take us, you know, days to do this. And we're doing things in minutes, right? Like, oh, we have an update. 
you know, we run it through automation, boom, it's out, it's done. You like the first couple of times you do it, you know, people are like, it's done. And we're like, yeah, it's done. Like, uh, and then like the QA teams and dev teams was like, oh, it's done. Right. And then you go from kind of no way to a little bit of wonderment and then to no good deed goes unpunished. Right. Cause now you've, you've set the expectation that everything's super fast. Um, but that's the win, right? I mean, our job is to, again, I, the way I you know, think about it with my teams is to turn the business around, have them face forward, go make revenue, you know, make great product for our customers. Cause that's what really matters. Cause if you have that, you'll get revenue and then, you know, you get paid the silly stuff. Right. Like, um, but it, but it has been a joy and the, and the tool is super ingrained. Um, and you know, we, we made the choice, we bought it, we used it, you know, you kind of get a little, uh, but there's no questioning about Pulumi. And it's one of those tools that works. Like there is no confusion that it's well used. It's well deployed. And if you took it away, we would cry. Like we wouldn't, we couldn't do the, we couldn't hire enough people to do the automation. Right. And, and given kind of the programming capabilities inside of Pulumi, and that's the way, I, right. It's just not, a, it's not one dimensional, it's three dimensional. Right. So the ability to use those dimensions in lots of different ways to do the automation is what really makes a difference to the teams. You know, I, I, my counterpart, Paul Wolf, who, who owns InfoSec, right? Like his whole team, like we've got a DevSecOps, we're matrixed in together and we go through audits. And, and one of the really kind of interesting things is um, every auditor is like, you guys work super well together. Right. And a lot of that is because of the, you know, we've all agreed that we're going to use Pulumi. We integrate ourselves, we work together. Right. So as they, if they do policy or they need to do tools, right everybody's working together to go in the same direction. So like in this weird convoluted way, like it's brought in teams together in a really nice way that can tend to be adversarial, right? You know, points of contention, but we're all trying to do it like faster, better, cheaper. And then we add more safe on the, and more secure at the, at, at the end. Right. And it's not at the end, it's integrated into the whole cycle, but just kind of like doing a visual. Um, so it's been really wonderful to do it this way. Right. We've uh, we really enjoy the tool and it works. And, you know, I've got a big enough background in you know being a CIO, a CTO and a CISO that there just aren't huge amounts of tools out there and platforms that you work, you like. They deliver exactly what they said and there's some joy to using them. So, you know, from my team to yours, we thank you and, um, you know, don't take it away. <laughs> We won't. And thank you as well. It's been a great partnership. We always learn as much, you know, working with teams like your, your, yourself and, you know, ways we can improve the product. And, you know, we have a saying at Plumi, when the customer is successful, we are successful. And, you know, it's been a great partnership and definitely looking forward to many more years in front of us. Um, I'm curious on one, you know, you said faster, better, cheaper and secure. Um, it is interesting. I, I don't know if you would agree with this, but these days, you know, speed seems like it's more important than ever before. Uh, and yet it's, it's almost more challenging than ever before because of things like security and best practices and maintaining cost controls and making sure things don't get out of hand and yet moving a lot quicker than ever before. How have you faced that seeming conundrum? <laughs> so, um, and I think this is where, you know, lack of a better term, like the secret sauces come in. So you've got, you know, people process and tech, right? That's kind of, you know, our active ingredients. And so we look at Plumi as one of those active ingredients to doing this. But our ability to move our enterprise, like if we decide to deploy something or change something, it's just done in code, like full stack. So if you've got that full stack done, you've taken the variable of complexity out of it because we've already managed the, you know, lack of a better term, the complexities in the code, right? In the deployments, but it's not complex to do. Does that make sense? So it's really interesting. If you put the energy up front to do the automation, the, the ability to change is literally keystrokes. And, and that's been a real game changer. That ability that, 
is also the cost containment, right? So, um, you know, we've been really, you know, putting out massive environments into AWS, right? So, you know, usually every piece of the product has five, five environments, you know, from dev, QA, test, pre-prod, prod, right? But, you know, we light it up. And then in Plumi, it's literally keystrokes and we break down all those environments, right? That we don't need. So then you're, you're you have your cost containment, right? And it's fast, right? And then if we need it again for testing, if we're going to do a product enhancement, we just light it up, boom, done. It's keystrokes again. So the speed element is built into the product, right? That we, that we leverage um, the ability in the cloud native environment. So, you know, um, if you're going to do cloud, like if you have EC2 is expensive, Kubernetes is expensive to operate. If you have multiple clouds is expensive to operate. And so philosophically, we are, you know, we are cloud native and one provider. We do the DR, you know, we're multi-region, all the, all the fun stuff, but it is orders of magnitude cheaper. And then the cost containment is really what's with Pulumi to use what we need to use, when we need to use it, how we need to use it. Right. So if we're doing huge development, we light up if we're not, if it's steady state, we break it down. It's only prod. Like, you know, I've done this for a long time and like the ability is awesome. Right. The, the speed, the precision, no one's lack of a better term, hand jamming anything. Like one of the favorite things is seeing drift in the environment. Right from a security and an operations perspective, like we just don't have it anymore. One is, you know, through the security paradigms, we don't allow it. But even if somebody tried to hand jam something, like we would see it and we can just like, you know, push it back, right? If we have a problem, we lo load last, last known good in minutes, right? It's just, you know, it takes huge amounts of risk out, but huge amounts of opportunity. And I will agree with you on speed. So today, speed is the competitive advantage, right? So you're only doing a couple things, either you're growing organically, right? Or you're taking market share from someone else or you're creating something new, right? So if you're taking market share, that means you've got to get better at product, right? Or you're going to buy somebody and take in and buy their market or you're going to create new product, right? The, the first and third are really about speed. Right, because it's a experimentation. It's about outdoing your competition. It's about winning, getting the W. Right, and so that ability to do that. And if you're going to buy someone, like, you know, one of the tests I'm super looking forward to is, you know, we acquire someone, and then taking them, in lack of a better term, borging them. Right, so I kind of like the Star Trek Borg. Right, we're gonna put them put them into our automation and see how much we can take out of their operating costs as fast as possible. Right. Cause when you buy somebody, it's really getting those cost synergies as fast as possible is what generally, you know, makes or breaks the deal. Right. So um, I love speed. I think it is the absolute competitive advantage and uh, it's a tool I like wielding and it's at the, it's a fundamental premise for me, but thanks for saying it out loud. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Yeah, and so you're, I mean, you're you're sort of serving the business units who are shipping the products that are kind of generating right. the revenue. And um, how much do you perceive that the cloud, the infrastructure, the DevOps is really powering a lot of the success for your customers, you know, internally? Is that widely known? Has that changed? You know, over oh, the they're all so it's going to be no good D goes unpunished, right? So we've been we've kind of held them at bay, right? While we're moving huge swaths into the cloud, right? And, you know, knock on wood, we haven't had any outages, we haven't impacted revenue, we haven't done any of that, right? Um, but as we're, as we're leapfrogging into cloud native, we're setting up the products to go way faster. So as we come out, like we're gonna be redoing huge new swaths. Um, our product teams are looking at, here's all the improvements we can make with the new technology. So everybody is super aware of like basically we've built a ferrari and we're going to put it on a racetrack and let's go right and so there is tons of excitement and awareness of what of what we're done it's also part of the business um you know business case of why we did this like 
you know, the ROI of this is 0.9 of a year. It's insane, right? Just how much we're saving in money, just hard dollars going to the cloud. But then it's the speed advantage of developing new product, deploying new product, the ability to test new product, right? Like, you know, we're coming out of circa 2010 technology and leapfrogging into circa 2025 technology, right? So all the things you can, you know, wield with technology and, and part of what we've done in, is show people what's possible because, you know, it's not just explaining the tech, but showing what it can do. And through the process, we've been doing with that with the teams, right? Even just how fast we deploy infrastructure and code, right? Like people have gone through that transition. They, they believe it's not a wonder anymore. It's not, can you do this? Oh, is it just, you know, tech saying they can do something? It's literally been, no, hold my beer, watch this. And they're like, yeah, you did it. Right. So that's, that's been kind of the fun part. Um, so it is, it's been super enjoyable in the process. I mean, it's tremendous hard work, right? Going from your data center to cloud native, uh, the whole geometry of the technology is way different, right? So, you know, having the teams go through that arc, right? Like, how are we going to do this? And, um, you know, I joke, like, we're eating an elephant, get a big glass of water, right? And a, and a knife and a fork and you just eat, right? Because a little bit every day adds up to a lot. And again, I go back at the core, everything we did is, is based on automation, right? So we take we take all this stuff and we keep putting it in automation. And again, it's stacks, right? And I'll go back to, you see our automation chart and it just, it's just up to the right. And that's been awesome. Yeah, and I think if I remember correctly, you saved something like 71% of spend on cloud infrastructure or just overall operational expenses. Yeah, so, so the rough order of magnitudes is roughly a nine and a half million dollar data center goes to two million. Okay. It's enormous. It is ginormous. And, you know, that's where it's like faster, better, cheaper. And I always joke, right? Like, uh, you know, it's the CFO hug at the end of the day that you want, right? So it's, uh, if you get the CFO hug and you, and you got product, then you're probably doing pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, it's faster, better, and cheaper. Usually, <laughs> right. You know, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the interesting things that we did is we kind of stopped the investments in the uh, data centers and then we switched how we spent money. Right. So we stopped the capital spending in the data centers and we moved it to the cloud. So, like, you know, we you know, we spent money, but it was largely a trade off for those two years. Right. To switch capital from pocket A to pocket B. Uh, you know, we still had to go through the justification process and all that fun stuff and build the, uh, you know, build the financial models. Um, but like, I would argue you couldn't ask for a, a better management team to support, like the support I've gotten um, in the rest of the uh, IT org um, to enable us to do this. But I think at the same time, they've seen us actually succeed and are, are really excited to see what we can do with this thing. Amazing. Love, love all aspects of the story. I guess um, running up on time, I, I wish I could spend a lot more time just chatting through the experiences. I guess one one last question, which you you sort of alluded to, there's a you know there's technological change and you know, but there's a big cultural element too. Oh yeah. If you are kind of giving somebody in your shoes, you know, advice that's about to go through this, you know, do you start with the technology? Do you start with the culture? Do you do them both in tandem? Like what advice would you do for conquering that very difficult challenge? So, um, p humans have eyes. And so what we did early on was show people. So we did proofs of concepts. Okay. So the proof of concept was really kind of an X, Y, and Z axis. The X axis was, here's what it looks like. So it's that, here's what we're doing. So we took like a small product, we moved it into cloud native. We let everybody see it, right? Oh, not too, not super scary, right? Second thing is we let the developers essentially feel it and see what to do and took them through that process. And so, hey, okay, I get this. It isn't that hard. I can learn this, right? So everything is about taking fear away to make people feel safe. If you make people feel safe, right? They'll go get the job done, okay? 
the third piece is really the business piece that the is the business validation um you know it's um again they have eyes they see it work they feel good about it because at the end of the day it's kind of like the my angelou quote right it's not it's not what you know people will never remember anything about you besides how you make them feel i know i kind of summarized it but like if you can make them feel good that's really the end goal right hey this isn't super scary this isn't this is completely doable you can see the leap in the technology right and so then it's a process of kind of getting some champions right and start doing because you know people will figure out how not to do stuff right because they're uncomfortable and again it's uh, Newtonian physics. An object in motion stays in motion. An object at rest stays at rest, right? So one of my personal jokes, my job is to is a Newtonian physics is to put things in motion, right? And so um, me getting those people in motion and making them feel safe and good, like doing that is super important. And that's what really kind of, you saw stuttering at the beginning and then it took off. Once everybody felt good, oh, we can do this. Boom. Right. And you saw that just not in technology, but in the business. Right. And then, you know, with the CIO, I used to joke, right. Cause you know, speed and then, you know, cloud cost, right. So cloud costs, I call a CIO issue, like career is over. Right. So, you know, it is that, is that journey, not just of the tech and making them feel good, but the financial models, right. It all has to work together because the financial team doesn't feel good. And they're like, Oh, are you going to go crazy? Like that's, that's, it's, it's the same problem. Right. And it's the same with product teams. Hey, can you can you build this and and do it and support our business and generate revenue, right? Like, don't screw it up. So it's really about making everybody feel safe and good, and and that takes a lot of effort in the beginning. And again, I, my counsel is get it in motion because once they start seeing it, they can ask good questions. They go from I think to I know, and if you can get them into that I know space, it's again, it's not so scary. It's not so like oh my god, what's going to happen? They you know, and I always go back to humans have eyes, show them what it is and what's possible, and then they'll get it. Definitely words of wisdom. I, I love the Newtonian physics analogy. Like somebody's got to get things in motion. And it takes sometimes you got to take a little risk to get them moving in motion. But once people see the results. Yeah, I've got a personality flaw, right? I have infinite capacity for conflict in a good way, right? So I'm just like, nope. We're going. Let's go. How do I help you? Right. It's a lack of a better term. I joke. I can be like an evil overlord with a hug. Right. It's like, no, no, we got to go. Come on, let's go. And so it is that it is that process of making people feel safe. Right. It's kind of this orthogonal view. You got to push them a little, get through the uncomfort to get comfortable. Right. And if you do it and you're well-meaning, right, it's amazing what you can get out of people. Right. And how fast and how well they'll respond. But you got to get them moving. Love it. All right. Well, we'll end on that note. Thank you, David. Uh, thanks for being an amazing partner. We look forward to many years working together in the future. Uh, it was great to hear your thoughts today. Thank you.